Hey, what's up, YouTube, and welcome to part six of our introduction to Relic Knights. Uh, today, I'm joined by Robert Allen, uh, Robert Allen of the Combat Phase. Robert, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and Combat Phase? What's up, YouTube? Hey, Octave, how are you? Hey, what's up? <laughs> uh, yeah, so you and I know one another from our podcasting uh, extraordinaire of uh, Combat Phase which is a general miniatures gaming and, and all gaming, really, podcast. All audio, though. So you YouTube people, you're not going to see any pretty pictures of us. We just talk a lot. <laughs> cool. So uh, where can we find uh, Combat Phase? So we're either on Facebook under Combat Phase, or if you're old school, you can go to CombatPhase.com, or look us up on iTunes also under that strange moniker of Combat Phase. Very cool. All right, awesome. Okay, well, Robert, today our topic is going to be uh, activations. And uh, what I've got in front of us here is this is the uh, called a battle mat. Um, and I got the fancy pro battle mat. This isn't the one that comes in the starter. Uh, that one is paper, and this one is a rubberized, you know, kind of that same material uh, that you might have for your mouse pad. So... Uh, this might be a little bit difficult to see, uh, but you can see the outline of, say, three card slots here. And mm -hmm. then you three different a... deck areas, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to actually, I think I may need to take us up just a little bit to catch more of the mat. Um, you don't have to play with a battle mat, but it's a, it's a great learning tool, and it's fancy accessories, and I love having fancy accessories for my gaming. So... Uh, anyway, what we have here, what the, the way this is designed is um, there are supposed to be these three slots here, and these are called, this is called the ready queue. Uh, and then this slot here is called the active slot, and then you have a slot here, which is the link slot. And we're going to go over today kind of how an activation works and how to set up and, and use this battle mat. Um, so the first thing I'm going to point out about Relic Knights is uh, we have no turns. So there's no turns in Relic Knights. You just it basically play is continuous until either you hit a set number of victory points or you hit a uh, the allotted time. So it's one of the cool things about the game is you can control basically when the end point is going to be, either by the, uh, the victory points or the amount of time. So you can set your game to be as long as short as you'd like it to be. And... Uh, one of the things that you're going to need to do uh, in the case of uh, your your battle mat or your, I guess, your play is uh, you need to set the number of ready slots that you use because typically a game of Relic Knights is 50 points. However, uh, if you're playing less than, uh, say, 35 or fewer points, a very small game, you're only going to use two of these ready slots. So I hope that's straightforward so far. Um, yep. But yeah, it's it's really play is going to continue, going to stay along a continuous fashion like this. And during setup, uh, you're going to set up your ready queue. So we're going to pretend here for our example, we're going to pretend that we're we're playing a um, we're going to be playing a 50 point game. So before the game actually starts, you're going to go ahead and line up your ready queue. So I'm going to do this, and I'll do. Uh, Sophia Drake there, and I'll put Diamond Core on the end. Well, actually, not that this matters. I'm not like planning for an actual game that Robert and I are playing, although that's a pretty good cue if you if I don't say so myself. Uh, <laughs> over here you have a um, you have the idle pile. This is where um, models or units that are you don't intend to be using in the neck within the next three activations are going to go. So at the start of the game, for example, this is your ready queue. You would have, uh, you're going to deal out your hand of five cards. I'm just going to deal out a generic hand here. Wow, that is probably one of the worst hands imaginable for this setup. There's really nothing in here usable. Okay, so anyway, we're going to go over how an, uh, a typ typical activation works. So let's say it's my turn to go. Uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to take the, the leftmost card 
in my ready slots. I'm going to slide that over left to the active slot. And when I do that, I'm going to slide over the next two cards. Uh, that's going to leave one uh, spot here open on the ready queue. Then I'm going to perform my activation with this model. Okay, so at the start of my activation, I have a couple of things that I can do. Um, I can uh, I can do my, my typical activation, which is a a move, then an action, and then your follow-up move. That's uh, we explain this in how to read your cards. Uh, that would be a typical activation. You know, do your move, action, and then a follow-up move. In the case of suspect seven here, um, or looking at my cards, my cards are terrible, and what I'm going to do instead of doing that is I'm going to do a refocus action. So a refocus action is a, a move that's allowed to uh, any model in the game. Uh, and what that does is that forfeits your, your activation. You get no, uh, no beginning move, you get no action, you get no follow-up move. However, what that's going to do is that's going to net you a held esper. And you can, uh, you know, for example, uh, mark the held esper slot here on your card. Um, and then you're going to get to draw five more cards. So I'm going to draw five more cards here. Three, four. Well, it's kind of a bad day for uh, Black Diamond. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so you draw five cards. And the other thing to note at the end of your activation or your cleanup phase, you need to be at five cards. So if you have more than five cards, such as in this case, or if you have fewer than five cards, you're going to draw back up to five cards. So in this case, I'm going to keep stuff that's relevant to me. I'm going to keep the purple. Uh, red is somewhat useful. Blue is useful. Um, void is never useful, so I'm going to discard that. Uh, don't use these. And anyway, I'm going to end up with probably the most useful setup of that. Uh, you could do something with that anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the things that you can do is a refocus action. So if your cards are, are looking bad or you need held esper or you need to, um, sometimes you need to artificially cycle through your deck because of a scenario condition. This is another uh, way that you can do that. Okay. So uh, once the activation is over, um, now we, we're in cleanup, so we're at five cards. We're going to remove this card from the active slot. And now we can either, we have the choice. We can either put it in the idle pile along with the, the other units and pull another unit from the idle pile to put in our queue. Or if we really like Suspect 7, and I know a lot of you Black Diamond players do, we can put her right at the back of the queue. Which is interesting because uh, you, you can basically continue to cycle through um, units that you require to uh, achieve your scenario. And sometimes you'll, you may have units that are just sitting in idle. There are some units that actually benefit from sitting in idle. Like uh, the Diamondback, for example, actually has uh, more armor while it's in the idle pile. So uh, that makes things interesting. Um, one so of, can you reshuffle your queue? Are you locked into having Sophia Drake next? Or is there some fashion you can bring the Iron Chef up closer? They're pretty much uh, locked into my queue. Now, there's are, there are a couple of things that can cause this to change. Um, there are actually three things that come to mind that can, come to, that can cause this to change. One is if Sophia Drake were to die. So if Sophia Drake dies after, you know, before she gets to activate, let's say on the opponent's activation... She would go here to the dead pile, and then during cleanup, uh, these would move over, and then you can fill that third slot uh, with a new unit. So then, so she could die. That's not a good way to fix your queue. <laughs> not, not what you had in mind, no. <laughs> uh, there's also an effect called uh, knockback, which will take her from the ready queue and put her into the idle pile. Uh, and then these slide over, and then so you could actually an opponent can disrupt your uh, your activation chain. So that's another thing that can happen. Um, and the third thing can happen is uh, there are specific ability support abilities in the game that will allow you to change your queue. For example, uh, one shot has that ability 
uh, that's the Relic Knights for this faction, she can actually uh, take her action to basically reset her Q. And that's those are very powerful abilities. Uh, typically, only Knights or Relic Knights will have that ability. So that's a few things that can happen um, that will change your activation Q. Obviously, only the last one is the one that you want to do. The other two things are things that can happen to you. Uh, but very good question. Hey, so, thanks. So anyway, let's go on to the next activation because here's another, and that I'm glad we were actually able to cover that. That was uh, one of the things that we needed to cover. Uh, <laughs> so let's go to the next activation here and let's pretend it's our turn again. So Sophia Drake's gonna come over here. Now, uh, one of the things that's interesting about Sophia Drake is uh, she's an officer for a unit called Black Dragons. And I know all you uh, Black Diamond players have been waiting for your set of black dragons to come out because you do realize that this is a very powerful combo from what I'm about to explain here. So, Sophia Drake uh, has a rule on her card that says linked black dragons. So anytime you have a unit go that goes into queue that has the linked ability, you are going to pull the other unit that it is linked to into the slot below. So I'm going to turn the camera here so we can see a little bit better. So you can see uh, when Sophia Drake activates, we're going to automatically pull the Black Dragons into that uh, uh, link slot. And what's going to happen is Sophia Drake is going to go. She'll perform her action, uh, etc. Because she's an officer, if she does like shooting or anything like that, and the Black Dragons are, she's within three inches of the Black Dragons, she's going to gain a pretty significant bonus um, to her damage for that. Um, so she'll go. And she'll go into idle. And before the opponent goes, the unit in the link slot gets to go. So this is a very powerful mechanic in the game. So it, having uh, the linked ability is a very desirable thing. So if, again, she's going to go. She she may shoot. Um, just as an example here, she might say do you seven damage, and she might be with uh, with three black dragons. That would give her a bonus, uh, pushing her up to ten damage. So then she would finish. The Black Dragons would then go. They're still near Sophia for ex in our example. Um, they're going to um, do their ranged attack, which is damage four. Uh, and then uh, then it would go to five, six, and then up to seven with Sophia there. So that's a lot of damage back to back that if you have the cards that the opponent's gonna have to deal with. Very powerful mechanic again. And again, with cleanup, you can always just drop her right back in if you want to continue to do that. What so would very... you say? Sorry, what oh, would you say ahead. is the most powerful linked combination right now so far in the game? Well, this is one of them. Okay. Uh, Sophia Drake and the Black Dragons. Another one I would say is uh, probably Delphine, who is the questing knight for Doctrine. Delphine and her Cipher Echis. The fact that you have a Cipher uh, in your activation with a knight. Um, means a couple of things. It means you're going to uh, be gaining held Esper faster than your opponent. Um, and then uh, there are a lot of other interactions between Delphine and Echis, which make that particular combo very potent. Gotcha. So, so yeah, that would be an example of a linked activation. One thing that people like to do uh, that's kind of economical with uh, linked activations, for example, is that they might actually queue the linked pairing together uh, in their ready queue because what that does is that actually that actually gives them a little bit more flexibility and cleanup because now they have two ready slots that they can affect rather than one. So this is a way in, and yes you can do this in cleanup. You can slot them right back in which actually gives them a significant amount of activation. So once yeah. again linked very very good <laughs> you're going to want to uh, take advantage of that if you have units that have that. Well, what you could really do if, if there were enough in the army is to have three units that all have link, and then you're basically getting six activations as your opponent's only getting three. Now, I assume link is not that common. No, no. Thankfully, well, yes, link is not very common. There's, uh, To my knowledge, there's really only one, uh, currently, there are only one uh, linked pairing uh, in each faction, and some factions uh -huh. don't have linked. 
Uh, let's see. Off the top of my head, I don't believe uh, Cersei. No, no, Cersei has has Betty and Lug. That's a very powerful linked combination. But uh, Shattered Sword currently does not have uh, any linked units. Um, gotcha. So, but yes, if if in theory, if uh, if we get to that point, and uh, you know there are three linked pairings, I could see somebody doing that <laughs> and really getting a lot more activations than their opponent is. That's a very powerful mechanic. Okay, so one other thing I want to point out here for activations, which is quite nice. Um, and let's just see. Okay, so a couple turns go by. Let's say I, I uh, burn through some of my good cards. And wow, see, again, it's just going to be a bad day for did Black Did you shuffle Diamond. this deck? <laughs> I did the last time I, uh, I used it. So I don't know. Maybe I was playing, uh, might have been playing um, Doctrine or something. <laughs> But anyway, uh, one of the things that you can do during your activation, and I should also point out that you can forfeit any part of your activation that you wish to. So, for example, let's say I have Iron Chef, and he's just not really in the fight yet. Nothing, uh, and uh, there's really nothing going on, nothing, no actions for me to take with Iron Chef. Uh, in that case, I would do my move, forfeit my action, and then do my follow-up move. Uh, and it seems like a wasted activation, except there's one thing that you can do in this case. So let's say I had to move him, uh, so I don't, I'm don't. i not going to do a refocus. Uh, I'm going to move, forfeit my action, and then take my follow-up move. And I've got this really garbage hand here. What I can do is if I'm at five or fewer cards, I could, during your activation, not your opponent's activation, this is important. So uh, then you can discard your, you can discard any or all of your cards. Let's say I keep that one, because that one... Wait, yeah, that one's semi-useful. Then I'm going to discard four. And then you can replenish your hand. So there's a wild. That's nice. And look at that. I'm actually, now I actually can do something on my following activation. So that's another thing to bear in mind. And uh, sometimes in your early games, you might forget that you can actually do that. Um, but it's a good way to, to help you cycle through, find the cards that you need to, to have in hand. Uh, to start doing your actions, um, and also uh, it makes it so that there really are no bad activations in the game. There's typically always something you can do with the model. So um, that said, uh, you know, maintaining your activation queue and paying attention to your opponent's activation queue uh, is a big part of uh, your tactics in the game. So. Uh, it's always good to know who your opponent has up next, and then you should have uh, some sort of basic idea in your mind what you might want to do uh, with your own activations as you're queuing them up. So I think with all of that, uh, that's pretty much uh, what we got here. Do you have any other questions or any thoughts on on how this works? This is a obviously this is a very unique mechanic. Um, in uh, miniature wargaming today. I don't believe there's anything quite like it that just does not use a turn format at all. No, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. There's a couple of things that use this sort of queued up activation idea, but um, nothing quite like this, which is very interesting. And the fact that you can keep activating models so long as you know they're alive is, is unique. Uh, I think only Infinity maybe does that. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things, the other thing that's interesting about this is it allows for a comeback mechanic. So let's say, you know, everything, everything in your your cadre, well, you were wiped out to one unit. Um, what that means is that one unit is going to get to keep going, um, alternating with your opponent. So uh, there are situations like if you have a powerful knight, that knight, if you get wiped down wiped out down to that knight, uh, that knight is still quite potent and capable of doing things, um, and it's going to get an alternating, well, no, the knight would still have a cipher, so bad example, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you had a powerful unit like, say, Suspect 7, she's going to get to keep going, uh, alternating with the opponent, and it, so it does allow for a, uh, a pretty good uh, comeback mechanic as well. Very cool. So, so what's next week? Uh, well, yeah, this is actually going to end the, uh, I'll, we'll say, the, the non-play talk. Uh, at this point, we're going to move into our play example. 
so starting uh, with the next section, we're going to be into our play example. Uh, and hopefully you guys can start to see all these concepts that, that we discovered um, or that we discussed uh, in play. So uh, that's going to be happening uh, in the next section. Robert, want to thank you for joining us for this section. Uh, hey, thank you for inviting me, Octave. I'm learning a lot about Relic Knights here. Very cool. Yeah, I hope that this uh, has been enlightening. So, uh, yeah, um, that's going to be it for this section. Uh, and thanks, you, thanks, everybody, for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.